Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today we are going to work on making the mobile coupe, the Coupe de Ville, even more mobile. So uh, come along and let me explain what we're talking about here. So to say that we've had some extreme weather this summer would be an understatement. And some of you guys even commented about uh, one of my design flaws and being the hard-headed guy, I didn't listen. But now I'm listening. What I hold in my hand in this bag of rice is charge controller number two of our satellite, satellite, of our solar charging system over here that even though it's in the battery box, when we'd have these heavy downpours, it would still splash enough water in there. I drilled holes in the battery box, so it would drain out through the bottom, but it just splashed enough water in there to get into the charge controller and turn it into crispy chicken. So that's what we have there, put it in the rice, but my goodness, you could look at the board and tell it was smoked. So I had to wait a week to order a replacement. So this is my third charge controller. Fortunately, these things are only uh, about 20 bucks, but 20 bucks times three still adding up. So what I'm going to do, instead of trying to find a way to better waterproof that or make all of that um, secure as far as getting moisture in it, the battery box, we're going to put half of all of that over here on the mobile coupe. And I'm going to explain why we're only doing half. And I know about half of you all are going to call me out on this and say that's a dumb idea. But hear me out and let's see. And you can comment below and just tell me what a dumb idea it is. So when I first built this and rigged it up to run solar, to run the charge controller, to run the energizer, uh, a lot of you comments like, hey Troy, why don't you just put everything on the mobile coupe? That way it's mobile with everything else. And the reason why I didn't do that at first is because the way this is configured with our electric poultry netting around, it's always a perimeter, like a donut, if you will, a, a circle the wagons type of thing. So the electric fence never comes in contact with the edge of the mobile coupe. Now I could make it so that it crowds one side, but I'd still have to string power over to the fence. And then of course still have a mechanism in which to be able to turn off the electric um, instead of just being a power switch on the mobile coupe because you know, I got to get over it to get in there to turn it off. So I'm not that good at jumping and stepping over that when it's hot, you don't want to get shocked there. So that was always the issue is like I still need a switch I still need to be able to control it on the outside here to turn it off and then be able to walk in to do any maintenance and you don't have to do this but ideally you know, this poultry netting those of you that used it know that it's it's really made with these tabs here to tie in together and, and that's where you want to electrify your fence you can obviously hook onto any of the legs anywhere else but it's a much smaller wire you have an opportunity for not having clean contact and not getting that load that you want and possibly jeopardizing the electrified field so it's it's best to kind of put it here on this tab so that means the tab and the in the mobile coupe would always have to be really close so the major components for this unit in case you guys aren't aware or don't remember of course we've got our solar panel that goes to our charge controller that then charges the battery and then of course provides a load to the fence energizer and the fence energizer then has a wire that runs to the fence and then a ground that's got to get stuck in the ground. So those are the main components. So what I'm going to do instead of moving all of that to the mobile coupe, we're going to take the heaviest components and we're going to put those on the mobile coupe and then still leave portions out here and I'm going to explain why. So in my siphon on all this, I've decided I'm going to mount the battery box just here on the inside of our panel the, of the, uh, the Coupe de Ville so I can reach in and adjust if need be or open the door and, and get in there and service it. And no brainer to of course put the solar panel. We're just going to make a magnetic mount, stick it to the top on our metal roof there and it'll be in a fixed position, no big deal. Wire will just come down underneath the seal here and then go straight down to our charge controller which will stay inside high and dry lead to the battery and then we'll have that 12 volt lead coming out for the actual energizer now the energizer again i debated do i mount the energizer somewhere here on the coupe and then have to run almost like a power line over obviously it can't lay on the ground unless i mess with all the insulated stuff which i don't want to for high voltage 
So if I run a power line, then I've got to have something that's like, is it waist high? Is it head high? Is it super high? So I've, I, I've thought about different ways of doing that and something I can stretch out and it's got to be variable because there's going to be different lengths at different times, different configurations. I just didn't like that. I didn't like having to mess with a high voltage string in that way. So I think what I'm going to do is leave the energizer out there. So then it's just the energizer, the little birdhouse it's in, and then of course the ground rod, which easy to stick in the ground. And then I'm going to provide the 12 volt from the battery over there to power the energizer. So with that, just being 12 volt, I can just simply lay that on the ground with some uh, old extension cord that I have that I can make up a 12 volt extension. So what that should just allow is just a simple extension cord over to the birdhouse wherever I mount it. And then I have a longer wire lead on the charge controller or the, ch the uh, energizer that I can stretch pretty far. So you can see here I've got, I've got the wire here. It actually goes down and hooks back around and goes back. So I probably have about 15 feet of that that I just run across the top of the poultry netting. So I think that's gonna be the plan and we'll see how that goes. Um, I really wasn't planning on doing this until next year because in two months, this is going to be put away for the winter and the chickens are going to go into the greenhouse coop. That's where they overwinter uh, because I really didn't want to overwinter this. It's just not built to keep them out of the cold and the draft. But let's get started, enough of me talking. Let's start building. All right, so I have four rare earth magnets and I gotta keep them separated from my hand because when they get too close, they slam together and pinch your skin. Uh, but these rare earth magnets are actually pretty common. You can find them pretty much anywhere. But anyway, so we're gonna, we're gonna use these. And so I quickly just modified the solar panel by adding these red oak rails to them. Obviously just bolts in the side and the whole point is to lift this up off the roof because we want to be able to get over the ribs of the metal roof. And what we'll do with these magnets is we'll just put a screw in them and we'll screw them down to the bottom side of those rails, that sled, and we'll be able to just lock it in on top of the metal roof. So now somewhere in this side by side, <clears throat> I have my screws. I think they're over there. These magnets are pretty handy in the sense that they have these little recesses, little cups in them. So if I can get the screw to go through it, then you can see it recesses pretty cleanly there. And then we'll just, I pre-drilled this oak since it's so narrow. <laughs> Can't get my bit to go on the screw. Here we go. Like Otis the town drunk trying to line everything up. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's give it a test drive on the door here. Do, 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 do. So I think that's going to hold pretty well. It's It sticks pretty good on the vertical. I can still pull it off with a little bit of force. But the good news is it's going to be laying almost flat on the roof. So all we got to do is keep it from just sliding off uh, or blowing off in the wind. And I think we got that covered here.
So I'm running out of daylight, clearly, as I'm sitting in the dark here. I'm troubleshooting, I think, in my wiring, I may have gotten my polarities crossed, which is keeping my uh, energizer from firing. So I'm going to switch those real quick and test it. Um, then obviously um, tomorrow when it's daylight, I'll show you what, uh, what I figured out. The chickens are locked up, so I've got the mobile coop closed up. So uh, even though the poultry netting is not energized tonight, they should be okay from predators. You know, if you're, if you're wondering, does my side-by-side -side have a dome light? It actually doesn't. It's these uh, O-bulbs. They're magnetic, and uh, I think I've talked about them in the past. And they have different illuminations and, and flashes and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I have I have probably six of them, and it just sticks to the roll bar there, and it's a dome light, so I can sit here in the side-by-side -side down in the pasture and troubleshoot my wiring. All right. Well, the next time you see me, it'll be daylight outside. All right, so the next day, here's what I have in place. Everything's working, and I'll explain what issues I ran into last night, thus working in the dark. But now we just have the birdhouse with the energizer, and a ground rod is all we need. And then we have an extension cord. Now, what I'm gonna show you as far as the wiring goes, uh, don't be too critical, because remember, we're dealing with low voltage here. We're just doing 12 volts. So if this was 110, this would be a no-no but uh, 12 volts, we're okay to go. So we've got 12 volt coming in on an extension cord that you see sticking out of the top of the mobile coop there. So I'm gonna plug this before I forget and try to step over it, then we'll show you what we have. Ground a little <laughs> Alrighty, so what we have is our battery, of course, sitting on a tray that we created. And unfortunately, it sits kind of under a roost, so it's going to get a little poop on it. That's why we put the lid on it. And then the battery leads come up into our charge controller. And then we have our cable running up to our solar panel that is magnetically stuck to the roof. You saw that yesterday. And then our load simply comes out to a typical household outlet. So that's just a 110 outlet that's not in a box or anything, it's just screwed to that board. And that's where our load is connected to, and of course our extension cord goes. Since the fact that it's low voltage, we can get away with that. So even if I would touch those leads reaching in here to unplug the extension cord, it's not like it's going to be a bad situation. I mean, we'll feel it, but it's not going to be a bad situation. So right now, even though the solar panel is in the shade, it's producing 13.3 volts, which of course is providing a charge. This system was out of commission for almost a full two weeks in running the energizer just off the deep cycle battery. So that's the beauty of having a super heavy duty battery that when things go down, I've got some time to, to run off the battery. And it would drop down to 12.6 volts. So it really didn't drop far. So it was doing quite well there. But I think this is going to work. As we go to move to different places, it'll be much easier because all I have to do is pick up the, uh, the birdhouse and the energizer and the ground rod versus trying to move the battery and all that. So again, you guys had, had suggested that, some of you guys had suggested that, um, but just trying to figure out the logistics of getting the power out to the outer perimeter. But I think this is gonna work for now.